Yeah, here we are back again, brought to you by 65hurls.com. Don't forget to get your hurlies there, especially if you want to get tasty ones to be a good full forward. We're looking at the best full forward in hurling, Michael Verney. Yeah, best full forward, I suppose, when you think about full forward, you always think a big target man, and you probably look back through history and you're thinking of Tony Dorn, full forward, edge of the square, probably thinking of Joe McKenna, maybe Christy Heffernan, Cormac Bonner from, from Tipperary, Declan Ryan maybe from Tipperary, those type of players. How much do you think it has changed from maybe that target man? Do you think it has changed much now when we look at the best full forwards? Yeah, well, when you were back in the olden days, you would be thinking, we need a bear in the square. That's what we need. We need someone who can catch that ball, win it 50-50, because we're going to drive it long and let the ball do the work. But the way Hurling and the way teams are looking to attack each other, that's changed. You now want your full forward to be the most dangerous player on the pitch. Your whole game plan is based around how can we get this ball into his hand in space, whether it's long, whether it's in front of him, whether it's low, you know, whatever it might be. And therefore, it's an unbelievably tough task for all full backs. So I think it's gone to a stage where you now want a supreme athlete in there or just someone who's unbelievably dangerous that if you give them half a yard, they're going to get a goal on you, which is why you have the likes of, I don't know, Seamus Callanan in there, Aaron Galan, guys like this that we're certainly going to talk about. So would you be of a similar mind in terms of how it's changed? Ah, uh, no, I would, yeah. Like, at club level and particularly when you go down the, the realms of intermediate and junior, it probably is still the bear in the square. Um, I was out at a junior match recently enough and... Uh, uh, junior B challenge game and it was definitely the full forwards were, were both definitely bears in the square invariably though it's it's lads that are big they probably still have a good touch but maybe are, are just are just carrying are just carrying a bit whereas now the inter-county full forwards they're really the hitmen they're the hitmen they're the ones that are going to drive the nails into the coffins of teams like Callan has been unbelievable the last couple of years the form he's been in if you take out the, the back injury in what was it 2018 18. He's been he's been absolutely unbelievable. 14, 15, 16, 17, and obviously last year, last year then as well. Um, I probably I probably would look at it like that. You're like, and the funny thing is, say when Joe Canning was full forward for Galway, a lot of the problem was because he was the fulcrum of the attack, and they maybe didn't have enough around him. Teams were able to maybe tie him down somewhat. So if you have, a, you know, if you have a sprinkling of lads around you that are able to take the load off you a small bit, then you can. You know, you can usually do a bit more as a full forward. Whereas if you're just the main man leading an attack by yourself, it can be easier. You can drop a sweeper in front or whatever. But yeah, we have a we have a fair stellar list of full forwards to go through by all accounts. Mm. And some of them are quite different because Seamus Callan and Aaron Galan are the sort of guys that you get it into them and it's alarm bells for the opposition if they're one on one. Whereas Colin Fenley, it's alarm bells for different reasons because if he turns and runs at you, you're in serious bother. And even Wexford when they were playing a sweeper. And it would have been, I think, Sean Murphy in 2017. Both himself and Liam Ryan, I think, ended up with bookings because they were just rugby tackling to the ground. And I think he won one, if not two, penalties that same day. So he would be quite different. Yeah, he's definitely... He's, he's your kind of... Maybe the all kind of brawn approach. He will take you on literally every time he gets the game, every time he gets the ball. And it's like a point is usually the last resort for him. A point is the last resort if he feels like he can't get a goal or won't win a penalty, he'll take a point. Um, it's interesting, there, like you have that type of approach, then you have maybe a kind of a Patrick Horgan as well, who, if he's if he, a ball is put in one on one, you know, on the fourteen or that, he you've seen him been able to been able to use his stick to knock the ball away or flick the ball down for himself as well. Invariably though, he will be coming out the pitch a bit and he will be doing a lot of his damage out around the forty five. See, it's a fine balance between being able to keep the player in at the edge of the square and maybe not getting that much ball and being able to bring the player out. So if you pull if you pull him out like Horgan's often pull out, you are pulling away the goal threat a bit, but he's also increasing the chances of him getting on ball. So a lot of the time he's gonna put over four or five points, but he won't get in for the couple of goals maybe that you that you really, really want him to get, you know. Although he is starting to put, starting to put that right in the last couple of seasons and obviously that game against Kilkenny was the high point of his career, you'd imagine, with 3.10, including that goal from his uh, from his knees during the uh, first half, I think. But um, the thing about Horgan, and I remember watching just his movement in the 2018 semi-final against Lim Limerick, that classic that went to extra time, is that instead of him making runs like with his back to goal and running out to try and get the ball, and you're obviously running further and further away from goal all the time, he was doing what the good forwards do, which is you move left, right, left, right, left, right, 
Um, so you're never actually narrowing your options. You're just keep opening up one side and then the other for the ball to be distributed to you. And I think that's what all these forwards are doing quite well. And we even talked a couple of years ago on the Hurling Show about Seamus Callan and that too often when he was making his runs from side to side, he'd received the ball well outside the, the parallelogram and he'd be heading towards the corner flag before he even got it. And that's the, one of the things that Aaron Galland does well, is that he does that thing of arcing away from, let's say, the left side, let's say the left goalpost is behind me, he arcs out around, collects the ball, and he's actually just ready to tap it over as he's collecting the ball. So that's what the best forwards do. Shane O'Donnell, uh, who we talked about more in the corner forward position, when he's closer to goal as well, he's collecting it and turning to look and looking to go at you straight away. So that are, those are the hallmarks. The, the thing about some of these really, really elite forwards, full forwards in particular, and I'm probably thinking of Callan, John Conlon, uh, Colin Fenley as well, you need you need a full back realistically that's going to be six two or three and about fourteen and a half stone to be, to be able to handle them. You're not going to be able to put your corner back in on them. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to be able to put a five ten or five eleven that in on them because invariably those really the really 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 good I think full forwards are lads that are going to be able to kill you in several different ways. They could kill you with high ball coming in. They could kill you with fast low ball coming coming in, and they can probably kill you with movement as well. Uh, that's why that's why Callan is definitely upper echelon probably probably for me because you're not going to be able to like he will if you just say if he goes out corner forward he's probably it's probably going to cause a complete shift on a full back line because the full back's probably going to have to follow him because the corner back probably wouldn't be able to keep up with him phys- physically if you know if you know what I mean no one no more than like we talked about Alan Cadigan in the corner forward in the corner forward bracket if he goes in full forward you're going to have to put a different type of a full back in. So I think the really elite, the likes of Callan and Conlon in particular, they require, like Hugh Lawler was probably the only one in the Kilkenny full back line that would have been able to match up somewhat with Callan last year because he was because he was so big. Um, and that's what they, they, they cause that. They cause you to, I don't know, they cause you to have to put a certain type of player in, a player that can only generally play in a central position if you know what I mean remember when when Gawler tried to put Parik Mannion in on on Callan full back yeah it just, it, just did, yeah it just it just didn't work you mm-hmm. know what I mean they cause that sort of a headache for you they cause you to make make it that you can only have like one or two players that could actually plausibly pick them up would you consider Connor Cooney John Conlon and Connor McDonald in in some ways kind of similar propositions for for defenses big barreling sort of guy who can win a ball on you like a high ball and to be fair low as well but they are that goal threat and their big physical presence but maybe not the same level of silk no probably not not the probably same level like mcdonald definitely won't have the same level of pace as Cannon, but offers something unbelievable under a high under a high ball mm. like he's like tony dorn was unbelievable under a high ball mcdonald's i'd say with that same kind of lefty probably looked back on a lot of videos and kind of emulated his, his game on that He'll kill, he'll kill you under a high ball he's probably one of the best we'll probably go into that in another video uh, about who is the best paw in the game but he'd definitely be up there Conor Cooney after uh, since 17 his form has been, has been a bit hit and miss you, you're not 100% sure if he's even going to be in the Galway team um, but there's a, like I'd say when you're looking at the elite elite you're, look, you're looking at Horgan you're looking at Seamus Callanan and if John Collins obviously out for the year, so Clare are going to have to find a new full forward, and maybe Shane O'Donnell will be sacrificed from the corner to the to the full uh, to fill that kind of remit with maybe Podge Collins coming in. But uh, yeah, there's there's a few good options there. Fenley, a different type of option, that kind of a physical force that can just put a team totally on a back foot. And again, if you put a corner back on him, they probably won't be able to handle him. Mm, I think Ronan Hayes is a very good talent for Dublin. For the coming years they just need to get a bit more around him because obviously you can fairly swarm certain elements of a team's attack if you don't have too many other scoring options so but i do think he's a good player i think willie dunphy with leash is someone we've talked about before killian doyle now we probably could have put him out in the center forward line but uh he, he's been very good for westmead putting up big scores over the years so it's getting to that time we're going we're going to have to start narrowing it down a bit isn't it yeah, the, the only thing I will say is some people will probably say that Galan, you know, got an all star corner forward and wears the, wears the corner forward's jersey. But, like, 
since Flanagan hasn't been playing the last couple of years, Flanagan's been kind of on and off in games. And even when he is playing at times, he can be in the corner. I think you'll yeah. find Galan is more in full forward. He's well, what the, the you're saying, one saying about forward. Flanagan is like, I remember a few times in Thurless, he'd be full forward, but he'd actually drag the full back all the way out to the wing. So in some, in some respects, he's kind of a decoy and he wants to create the, those mismatches back at the field. So ex for example, Tipperary, he would bring James Barry out to the wing, which means Tip would have two cornerbacks who are like five foot nine closest to goal, which is not exactly what you want. So he was used quite smartly. Yeah, I, I, I very, very smart because it, it allows Galan uh, ex exploit other deficiencies inside. He's de Galan is definitely very high. Like Galan is, is is top two or three in this debate for me. When when push comes to shove, I don't. I think it's very, very hard to overlook Callan. Being honest with you, a goal in every championship game last year, uh, as we said, had back trouble in the in the twenty eighteen championship. Bounced back unbelievably well last year. Hurler the year, uh, uh, captain goal in every game. Nominated for hurler of the year three times in what 14, 14, 15, and sixteen, and in fifteen in particular when Tip probably weren't even going that well in fifteen, and he delivered that tour de force performance against Galway in the semi final. Um, I just think on his on his on his day he he just he'll just kill you and he'll kill you. And it's it's almost like death by a thousand cuts. He can kill you with so many in so many different manners and methods. And and I think like if we're talking about it now. I'd have to say Callan. If you're talking about like who would you take for the next decade, you'd probably take Callan. Mm. But we're talking about who's the best foot forward right now, and I'd be taking Callan. Yeah, I think Connor Whelan. We arguably could have put him into this conversation instead of the corner forward. And as the season goes on, we, maybe we'll kind of change our opinion on that. Colin Fenley got an All Star uh, in 2019. Now he was named at wing forward, but he was he was obviously playing in full forward most of the time. And I remember that performance against Limerick in the semi final. He came off a broken man. Uh, after a great performance, he just put so much in. I think he was carrying an injury. Obviously, been so good for Ballyhale the last couple of years. We all remember that flying goal he got against Thomas's at Croke Park in the final. Yeah, Galan has to be right up there. And yeah, it. I mean, he really has destroyed so many teams at this stage. Now, Cork have actually been able to kind of put him under wraps a small bit. But Patrick Horgan, another guy right up there at the top level, but probably hasn't delivered the scores from play and certainly goals over enough seasons to be up there in the exact same kind of stratosphere as Callan. I, I know what you're doing here. I know what you're doing. You're listing out everybody that could be in the equation and then you're going back to the tip man. But unfortunately, you can't get away from it. He has been devastating over the years. 35 championship goals, every single one of them from play. No player that's currently out there at the moment can come even close. So how can it not be him? Six foot four, so he's a problem in the air. Um, he's faster than you. He's got a be better hurling than you, and obviously his confidence is flying, and he's he's the reigning hurler of the year, captain. So there's very little he can't do. So I think it has to be him almost by default, but because he's obviously brilliant, there is good um, there's good alternatives here, but it has to be him. Yeah, and and just what I was saying about you know the physicality of a full forward. He's literally your prototype modern full forward. He has the height. He has the, the physical presence, he has the strength, he has the speed, and he has that kind of hitman-like mentality in front of goal as well. He's, mm. he's, he's everything you want in a full forward. If he, go, if he goes in full forward, you immediately have to think, we have to have a certain type of player on him. And you need to have, uh, you need to have a full back that can basically do everything. You can't just have a full back that's good under high ball, because they'll just put low ball in front and he'd absolutely kill you. So you need to have, you know, he causes unbelievable questions uh, for a manager to have to have to make, you can't put. We talked about Sean Finn in the corner back debate. You you can't really put Sean Finn in full back on Callanan because there's too much of a height kind of discrepancy between the two of them. So uh, yeah, it's 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 Callanan for me, and he's just he's just been phenomenal over the last ten years. And it, funny enough, he probably doesn't get the credit he deserves when he's got when he's gone. He probably will, but he probably doesn't get the credit he deserves for what he's done. Obviously, what has he got? What? Three All Ireland wins, three All Ireland wins now, 10, 16, and 19. The couple of All Ireland defeats are probably, I've heard him, but his form has been unbelievable over the last five to six years. Absolutely outstanding. Absolutely. And if anyone out there disagrees with us, feel free to make your case. Let us know on Twitter. I, I think we'll have a few Carconians disagreeing with us somehow. <laughs> oh, we'll bring it on. Absolutely. We're only mad for a bit of an old debate. So that's it. Brought to you by 65hurls.com. Don't forget to get your hurlies there. Season's getting going, so you're going to need a few sticks. Thank you very much, Michael. Here's it.